Hey guys, um, I have no idea what just happened, so um, this is part two, and uh, we'll see if <laughs> if we can figure out, um, we'll just keep going. All right, so there you guys are. Some of you are back. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to keep painting, and hopefully we will get right back on track. Okay, thanks. So I just kind of worked a little bit on the mountain here and just started to get in a little bit more of these textures and values as the mountain sides go up. So I'm working on a little bit more ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, some of these mixtures here. Um, good to see you guys are back. Again, like I said, I have no idea what just happened, but anyway, so it's split in half. We have part one and part two. <laughs> so the values back there on this passage are a little bit um, darker, and so I'm adding a little bit more blue to them. And... Uh, that I didn't want them quite as dark as I see them on there, but I'm gonna just add a little bit of subtlety to this. If you're just joining, um, yeah, I have no idea what just happened, but why it just quit, but uh, here we are. And so, I'm again, I'm just working on, what I did is I did some of these alterations and changes in this mountain passage in here. I try not to do too much because I had no idea uh, why it was glitching. Whatever, here we are. All right, so this passage then comes down. And again, all I did to this was to add just the slightest bit of blue and yellow ochre and white. And this, I lightened the value from the top down because it makes it feel a little bit more like there's mist in this valley. And I want all these edges here to be pretty soft and undefined. And so I see some of this coming over here. And of course there's trees and things in front of this mountain side, this slope here, so we'll get to those later. I'm sort of working around the trees here, coming up this side. Again, um, I'll just tell you what I'm doing on my palette. I, it's just, just taking a little bit of the ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, some of the white that's already on my brush to get some of these darker passages of the slope over here, squinting down at my reference on the computer to get uh, some of the more accurate color patterns and passages and um, about like that. Glad to see you guys are back. <laughs> Again, I, I don't know, um, whatever. So that looks fine for that color. Again, just Getting, I want to simplify this and not get too fussy with all the different changes, so that can easily happen. And I'm also painting this really thin because I know I'm going to be painting tree over the top of that. So um, taking a touch of cad yellow to the white because I see some grass on this passage of the slope that seems to be getting hit by the sun, and I just kind of want to suggest that in this time of the day that some of these things are happening, little things back and through there. Just a little. It doesn't have to be anything that calls the attention or obnoxious or too bright or whatever. A little bit back in there. Just very subtle. As our as our eye travels as our, as we pick up color as it travels towards us, the first the first thing we lose from the closeness right here is red. So then anything that's back here is going to not have as much red. And then the next thing that we lose is yellow. So this is your last chance to see yellow. And then as you go back, there's obviously no red or yellow. You're into the blues. Okay? So that's, uh, that's where that is going. with Those color digressions as well as the value digressions. Let's get that a little bit greener. Kind of getting it too light. And so those are just tools that you can keep in your arsenal of knowledge as you're painting either from life or plein air. Okay, so I'm kind of liking how this is doing this thing and it's going back. And so now I'm going to, that's all background. I'm going to work a little bit. There's one passage over here that I'm taking a little alizarin. 
and a little bit of um, the yellow ochre and white. Let's get that a little more aggressive because there's not enough on my brush. And I saw some of these passages of these lighter, redder sort of areas like that. Provides kind of an interesting value separation over there. So let's work on the next step towards us, and that is this far away, there's a meadow back there, and we can barely see it, but I do want to get it in because it's really pretty. And I'm going to use a little brush for that. So that is, that paper towel is pretty well spent. I brought this one. A um, little darker green, still not using the phthalo green. Let's grab the yellow ochre and ultramarine blue, and I'm still just mixing it right into what I have going on here. And it, there's more blue than yellow because that's way back there. How's that? Always just put a put a stroke down and see see what you get. That value, how does that compare with some of these other value notes that I paid attention to? I'm gonna add a little bit of white to that. Okay, so I just wanted a touch lighter. That's still too too much of a not enough of a separation, so I'm gonna make it just a little bit darker. Okay, maybe the smallest bit darker. And just laying down pieces of paint. And as you can see here too, I'm making the valley, the edge a little bit sharper so that you can see that this passage is in front of this passage. See the edge difference? And uh, just a little trick you can do to make those things separate. I twirl my brush on my palette sometimes. See, because as you're painting, you can get things pretty well goopy on your brush. I'm sure everybody knows that. And I'll just take and, um, if I'm paint, painting a color and I don't want it to build up, but I also don't want to wipe it off on my paper towel because I don't want to lose all that color, I'll twirl it on the on my palette, what that looks like in slow motion. Ooh. <laughs> okay, and so I still have that paint, so if I want it still, I can scoop it up and use it. All right. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more, a little darker here as these trees, clumps, are coming around and in the shadow of this hill here, they're losing this um, passage of mist as they move their way this way. You have to use logic when you're um, painting as well because you don't see that in the photo. But we have to be aware that that is likely what would have happened over there. Okay, so that passage of background is done. I do want to take and do some of these trees as I see them back there, just little, almost like little lollipops raising their head out of that tree line. Okay. So we'll go whoop, 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 some of those. And I will always post these um, paintings on my Facebook page so you can see what was going on for real. <laughs> on my page. <laughs> Whatever it was, there it is. Okay, so um, again, that meadow back in there, I have that color for the green grass. Let's make that more vibrant so we really draw the eye right back there. So white and that yellow. Twirl my brush because I don't want to lose it. Twirl. Flatten, flatten. Take the brush, press and drag it out. Flip it over, press and drag it out. And then you can take and just with the chisel of your brush, scoop. And just like Bob Ross used to say right there, that little roll right on the edge, that's what you want. So we're going to come back in here and I'm just going to drag that passage of sunlit meadow and over here. Oh, 
last one. Lost my picture. It doesn't warn you when it's going to um, shut you out. Okay, so there is our sunlit meadow back there looking all glowing and happy. And just I, what I didn't want to happen was a really strong, sharp edge there. And so I just kind of soften that a little bit. All right. Now we're getting much closer into these foreground darker values. So I'm going to start over here and um, work on pulling out those values as I see them there. Um, I'm going to go back to my size 6. And that way I can be a little bit more aggressive in grabbing a little bit darker colors. Now, I'm almost to the place where I may want to start adding red into my foreground because my colors are getting closer. Okay, so that's a nicer, little darker tone than um, that background color. And to use the linseed oil, all I do is just dip the teeniest corner of my brush in the oil, and then I use that to mix. That way you don't get too much. If you can get too much, then everything starts to get really slick and it kind of runs away from you and then then you got a problem I I feel that if you stick with a brand of paint that you really know and like and I really do admire gambling paints that the consistency is pretty much always the same and it always has this really nice consistency of like sour cream and so to me that's that's why I stick with it and I hardly need any medium at all So now you can see too, I'm starting to get thicker coats and um, chunks of paint because we're getting closer to us as the viewer and it just kind of makes more sense. All right, now um, there's a shadow of a bush over here and I want that shadow in before I add the highlight of that green. So I'm going to add a little bit of burnt sienna, which is the sh it's a red family. We're going to just start to lay that in a little bit more aggressively, like that. Just like that. And then um, I'll paint the sunnier green on top. And I'm just going to take some, I just took some yellow ochre, and I'm mixing it in with my sunlit green grass color there. Whoops. A little bit of um, ultramarine blue. Let's see if we're close with that. That's okay, yeah. I don't want it bright and glaring because it's going to compete with what I'm going to have going on up here. And that's important that background needs to stay in the background. Its sole function is to support everything that's going on in the foreground. So as much as I think that these trees back there are just really great, they have to, they have one job. And that is to support the main story. Oops. Okay. I also don't want to get too fussy with detail and things like that when that really isn't what a painting is about. It, it shouldn't be about the detail because really, to be honest, anyone can add detail to any painting. It's simply a matter of time. I find the real respect in art is in the detail that they chose to leave out and it still holds together. That power of selectivity to me is what makes a successful painting. And uh, we only translate by means of selection. You should have that. I, I should have that. It should just be written right here <laughs> on my easel. Translate by means of selection. We're not photos. We're not photocopyists, photorealists. Um, I mean, unless that's what you do. But uh, I find that as artists, we get to play. Okay, so I like that passage there. It kind of has that interesting sort of shh that way. And I know that there's a bigger tree here, but oh, I'll add it. Let's do that. Still using the size 6. Where is that living? It's right. I think that that bulge there was kind of part of it, but I don't want it to compete with that. So let's make it a little smaller.
That's fine. It doesn't have to be much, just enough. So we've got this layer in front of that sunlit patch. And I can make that a little bit darker, richer, maybe a little bit more sienna and yellow ochre. That would be pretty. And I'm going to pull that down this way too. That's, I think that value is getting there too dark, so I'm just going to go right back in there and lighten that up a little. That's better. And I just did that with yellow ochre. A little bit of yellow ochre. And um, I do have some burnt sienna on my brush, which again is giving us that sense of warmth, and we want that. Okay, so now uh, back over to here. I want this passage here where the these trees tuck into some foreground business right here. So we're going to take and make that a little bit darker. And I've got a pine tree that I really want in here because I feel compositionally it supports. It's almost like music notes. And that's kind of like that last note that provides a little bit of closure. Boop. When I do a still life... Um, I like a little bit of a grape sometimes back in the, the the back shadow corner. It just sort of seems to give us a sense of closure to the scene. So that little thing of balance there is really nice. Okay. So And then this, while I've got it, is the same value here. And I'm not, I'm squinting down at that and I don't see a whole lot of other information. So I see a slight shift in the color. So I've made this passage here a little bit brighter green. And that is just the cad yellow. And uh, yellow ochre. And then whatever bluish stuff was on my brush. <laughs> bluish stuff. I don't really know what's happening with my brush. Okay, so there we go. And then while I have this color, as I sort of cascade down this way, I know that that is going to be that shadow color, and I really like that. So let's kind of incorporate what we have going on here into the foreground, and I'm just sort of aggressively getting into that... Um, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, into here. And I have this yellow ochre too that is mixing in with that. I'm kind of thinking about making that a river and I can do that just by suggesting so maybe we'll play with that if I don't ruin it. So this will be nice, a dark, nice and a dark shadow there. And then over here, remember this is my cluster of bushes. I'll show you again. Um, Okay, there you go. <laughs> there's there's my reference. If you can kind of see that, I did share the picture earlier on Facebook, so you can you can see it a little bit there. If you go to my timeline, um, and watch it there. And I really do appreciate you guys sharing these videos. If if you do like them, and um, we're we're doing a lot uh, with our our business, um, Renaissance Academy, and so you may find that. Uh, if you're liking these videos, you may want to check out what we're doing there because we're really adding a lot to it all the time. And um, we just released the pre-release offer for um, our newest series of seven videos. And um, that's called From Mesas to Mountaintops. And uh, it's really a, a, a beautiful, it was when we were out in Colorado here and even on this location. Um, filming for these videos. It was so beautiful. So we did seven videos out there and <clears throat> unlike these um, Facebook videos and YouTube videos we provide like worksheets and workbooks and things that you can work through <coughs> or just have as reference while you're painting. 
All right, so I'm gonna provide a little bit of a separation here. I think I want this to be a little bit more atmospheric right here because, it, again, it's behind this clump of trees, and I want that to have some separation there. A little more white. White will cool anything down. So all these subtle greens are so beautiful and, and fun to play with. You can just make slight alterations um, with what you're doing. I like to even take a, the tiniest touch of phthalo green and mix it with cad yellow to get a brighter, springier green. And um, just work that into what I'm doing. Scrape like that. And I am going to get those trees, but I have to build around them a little bit here. I want to get these brighter and richer now as they're coming towards us. Again, just laying down pieces of paint. sort of lay in the shadows over there okay so that is fine I do want to finish that little cluster of whatever's going on back here so that shadow came through there and then there was a clump of trees and things getting a little bit of light separating itself from that so let's give those trees some base down in here So we'll just kind of let that go off into who really knows what's happening back there. That's fine. Maybe a little bit of more base from these trees will be fine. Like that. All right. So moving forward. Now I want to just get the tops like of the sun hitting these bushes. So I grabbed some yellow, cad yellow, some white, and just letting it mix in with what I have there on the palette. Laying down broad chunks, looking at the shape of these bushes. Squinting. This way. And this is kind of a little bit lower, so if I were there in nature looking at this and I was squinting down at this, this would be very um, just soft and subtle like that. And I can take some of those and just sort of lose some of the edges and let that do its thing there. Same with here, as these kind of cascade over the top of these bushes. I want to lose some of these, the sharpness of these edges here. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to get up here and get into these trees. Um, I need a new paper towel. Okay, I think we're doing great. We're about an hour into this. And if you missed my announcement that I was going to be on at 11.30, all of these videos are still available. All, this whole video you can watch from the beginning when this is done so you, you didn't miss anything and um, that'll be up and I'll, I'll eventually be sharing these on YouTube as well all right so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking some of these darker this darker color that I have it's not my darkest dark because I don't want those to be very very dark except where the tree trunk tucks into the foliage then I'll make it darker so for what I'm gonna do here is I'm squinting way down at these um, clumps and I'm just going to take and mass in a light suggested passage of where these are going to go. I want that a little greener. Not much greener. Um, just a little bit. Again, I'm, I'm kind of thinking air. I lost my picture. Please hold. Okay. 
I'm thinking um, light and airy and letting the paint just gently mix with the background color there. Just enough. And I'm taking careful account of the actual shape of the blob <laughs> of tree because it, it can, um, it has a unique character all its own. And it's important to focus on actually studying trees and their elegant forms, their trunks, their arms, the way that the uh, clusters of leaf, blobs, whatever, are shaped because that that gives it so much character. Now as I'm putting these little dabs down I'm looking back at my reference all the time to be aware of um, the shape and where I'm going with it. This is just the first layer of this tree and I want this to be the furthest away area of this tree. And so this is going to be my lightest value as well. It's not going to be my darkest at this point. Okay, so again, I'm going to come back up in here and just soften some of these areas where the tree meets the background, just just right along the edges. Right here. I, I also don't like the look of the dab, 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 dab like that. So I'm losing some of those obvious brush marks and just letting them have sort of the soft ambiguity that just sort of seems to make sense. In real life, we don't see every leaf on a tree. We don't. And um, so I like the line from Hen Robert Henry where he said, um, oh, I, I want to get it just right, but I'm sure I'll get it wrong. He said, don't, don't tell me about the feathers of the bird, but paint about the feeling of flight. I'm sure I got that wrong, but you get the idea. And that's the same thing with these trees. Don't tell me about all the leaves of the tree. Tell me about how the wind blows through those leaves. I love that. I like spending time with trees. Out in nature. I think that's one of the reasons I'm so responsive to plein air painting and what it's meant to me in my life and even just health-wise. There's a, there's a peaceful sanctuary that you can really only get from actually being out there and immersed. And that's one of the reasons I shared that picture on my Facebook page about being in beauty and nature and really just absorbing and taking it in. because that's very important. So to do a tree trunk, I just do little teeny tiny horizontal just like this. Instead of taking my brush and just going whoop, I think that's much less interesting. So I think that, you know, for example, in this tree, you can make it look a lot, have a lot more character by, um, of course, doing the, the subtle layer like that. And before I get into all the little sky holes and other subtleties, I'm going to kind of get this trunk in place and this graceful arch that I see it doing and any other um, significant branches that I think are going to help tell the story. You don't need every one of them. I like this one reaching up. Might be a little bit hard to see on there, but and of course everything on Facebook Live is backwards. So when I post this picture, you'll see it the way I was painting it. Okay, now I'm going to go back over that with a little bit darker green. So ultramarine blue, yellow ochre, just in some passages. Oops. How did I get that so bright? Just in a few places where I want it to feel like there are thicker patches of foliage. Just a few. I'm just laying those down as simple little 
pieces of paint. And you can see how loosely I'm holding the brush. Um, just not really making a big issue out of it. And then down here. I do want a little darker towards the base because we're getting away from so much atmosphere in and among the leaves and we're more in the shadows of the bottom of the tree. Okay, now um, I'm going to do this one before I get into the sky holes. So going back to that soft dabity dab, whimsical sort of like that. Again, taking into account the shape of the tree. It's okay to let it mix and mingle with the background. And it's okay to leave some of that um, rusty color that I have on the canvas already. And I am working a little bit around some of the sky holes that I already put there. I may cover some up or whatever. Sometimes you start out with something and you realize that um, you made a mistake and you have to go back over it, make adjustments, and tweak things as you go. It's, got, it's like life, you know. David LaFell always said, if it works in painting, it should work in life. All those principles and things we follow in art. If it works in your life, it should work in painting. If it works in painting, it should work in your life. And I guess that makes sense. The longer I've been painting, the more I see that that really is true. Keeping things simple, uncomplicated, clutter-free. Um, aesthetics, beauty. All right, so I think that this mass for this tree is, a, is all right now at this point. So I'm going to go through and do my tree trunk, and that is just the ultramarine blue burnt sienna. Just a nice dark. I've got some of that green already in that working area. Oh, I thought it was your mouth. No, I'm not sure what made the video stop before, but um, I'm just glad y'all are back. <laughs> so again, I'm just taking my my brush, and yeah, I'm, I'm holding it down a um, little, too, little too close to the handle, but whatever. Just doing, again, my tree trunk in these little horizontal strokes. Again, looking at my reference for clarity on the shape of this elegant tree trunk. I've got some branches reaching off over to the other one. I take my brush on my palette and I roll it or I lay it one way. Okay, I'll show you. I, I lay it, swipe it this way, turn it over, swipe it this way. It gives you a nice chisel and I scoop the paint back up. So then coming up here just to get this character again of this one branch. As a branch approaches the top of the tree, it gets a lot lighter because there's more air and light wrapping around the branches. So you, you have to press a lot lighter. You don't want to make it as black as it is at the bottom because it just won't read properly. And it'll have that childlike drawn on their effect. And I turn my, my brush over too. As I get one side of the brush kind of spent, it starts mixing with the color underneath. And then I turn my brush over, and I've got a new um, clean, dark area or paint to work with. 
coming down here. I've got some smaller branches over here. Oh, is it? I hope that you're still able to see it. There might be, well, yeah, I will always be posting these finished paintings on later. Just a subtle little shh. All right, I'm going to come back through here and just soften some of these, just like I did before on the other tree. I'm going to lose some of these tree branch parts where I don't need to see all of it. Okay, now I'm going to come back through and darken some of those tree branches just like I did on this, or tree leaf passages. Just a little bit. want this to have that cascading look and feel that I see and feel on my reference. So I'm going to just let that, I want that a little darker there. Okay, so that just tucks into that a little bit better there. I do want this a little bit lighter at the base where it's obvious that these bushes are set in front of those trees. Okay. Okay, so those trees are fine. I might just soften a little bit over here so that this one feels more like it's part of the background rather than the foreground. Okay, time to finish this up. Let's get the foreground done. I'm going to do this passage of green grass, getting to my bigger brush, and um, mm -hmm. let's get that going. So I'm just taking the greens that I have on here, um, grabbing a little bit of linseed oil. I'm going to take a little bit of the burnt sienna too, because I like to start from the dirt up. So um, dirt is under grass, obviously. So we're going to let some of the, um, this golden color of the base show through. And then I'm going to grab, oh, let's get some of that phthalo green. Just a little bit. A little more, oops, a little more ultramarine blue. I want some rich shadow greens at the bottom of this bush. Like that. Let's pull it over in front, too. You can see how by adding and making these colors really rich uh, in the foreground, it really will pull everything um, to the front. We've got some more of that over here. Beautiful, rich greens coming down to what we've decided is water. And a little more sunlight in this passage. Let's do sunlight with a touch of phthalo green and cad yellow. A little light, just like that. I don't know if you could see that. <laughs> um, so just laying that down. So that really gets that feeling of um, warmth and sun right there. Now as I come up and do this slope it kind of changes to a little bit more yellow ochre, so a little bit. There we go. And uh, you can 
see I'm just grabbing it's kind of like a dead grass color and that is just a little bit of that white with the yellow ochre I'm gonna let some of that shine through down there I'm really digging this effect here I think that's a lot of fun okay let's put some of this green grass on this side so that we feel like we have some a, a little bank like that and we'll let it go back and be a lighter green back in through here so just so you know too these paintings that I do for demos I mean, unless they sell right away or if they sell you can always ask but they're always available and um, because they're demos I, I price them a little more affordable because I do believe that it's part of the education if you can actually be able to have one of these in your home and look at it and, and remember the lesson that's that's excellent so I do price these much more um, approachable and uh, I want this a little more sienna in here So that warmth, too, gives us that feeling and illusion of this being closer. Just by dragging a little bit of sienna in there, it kind of makes it um, have that like clumpy grass feel. All right, now to paint some of the water, and then we're going to wrap this up. Cleaning my brush off. Let's get some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. We're going to make it dark, and then we're going to add light to the top of it. So I want some yellow ochre in there, too. This is going to be right along the bank. Like that. Turn that around. So just remember the nature of water. And how it likes to play and it looks for the path of the sort of least resistance as you're painting creeks and things. So we got a dark passage there on which we are going to build up lighter. So I'm taking some white and we've got kind of a neutral sky in there so just gonna go Keep it really simple. And I do want some more yellow ochre down here. Oops, that's not yellow ochre. There. That's feeling better. And then on top of that, I'll put some shine that I had going here. And then you can take and just take a little bit of like that. And then we're going to go just a few little shine, little shine. So we are suggesting oh, I don't need my reference anymore. Just a little bit there. Okay. Just going to come back through here with a little bit of impact in these passages. Give us some right there. Oop. Oh, that's all right, I guess. Let's go with it. show that lay of that hill there. All right, I'll get some of this on this side too to show that the same light is hitting this side, but it's hitting this side. All righty. That about wraps this up. So I'm going to add a little bit. Oh, you know what I didn't do is the sky holes in these trees. So I'll just do a little bit of that 
real quick. I'm just coming back up in through here with a little bit of the green, spring green, as I think it might be cascading through those trees. All right, so let's do that real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. Cleaning this off, gonna get some white with a little bit of yellow ochre, little teeny bit, and then just up and through here. I do need my picture back. Where do I see these? And these are very important and they can quickly be overdone and look spotty. So if you're gonna be doing this, you have to make them look as though they're part of the tree and sky holes, not on top of the leaves, but beyond them. So you have to lay it down and then just sort of soften and dab that, that, that which you just laid down. So that's it. And I'm going to back this up. I hope that doesn't fall. <laughs> All right. So that is the, um, that's the finished one of part two. <laughs> we ended up splitting this whole video. I don't know why. But um, so there it is. And I wanted to thank you guys so much for joining me. And I will also, um, thanks, Chris. I will also add to the top of this Facebook video too those same links that I had on part one in case you're interested. We do have a super special offer that we just released yesterday on our um, From Mesas to Mountaintops new video series so you've got to check it out if you're interested. And like I said in the um, live video last night that all of our videos that we release elsewhere whether it's through the Renaissance Academy of Fine Arts or um, just the regular videos that we sell I always do worksheets and workbooks with those, so you're going to get all of that information um, when you click and you check that out. And um, that's it. I hope that you guys have a wonderful day, and thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a fabulous weekend. Okay, bye-bye.